Hey students, this video read-along is a bit of a treat because other than me introducing the, um, the subject that we'll be reading along to, it's actually the transcript of a radio show on NPR where they're discussing, the host and her guest are discussing a topic that you should be very familiar with and that is Elizabeth Keckley. You should be familiar with it because for a number of weeks now in ELA, you have been reading Elizabeth Keckley's memoir behind the scenes, her autobiography of her time spent as a dressmaker for Miss Lincoln in the White House, okay? So other than me just reading the introductory paragraph to this, you will, we will all, we will both be reading along to the transcript as we get to listen to the host and the guest discuss Elizabeth Keckley as it relates to that movie Lincoln that came out a number of years back, okay? So this is Buying Freedom Through Dressmaking, and this was published a number of years ago, and it starts. The new movie Lincoln explores the last months of Abraham Lincoln's life and sheds light on prominent figures of the time. One lesser known persona is former slave Elizabeth Keckley. She became a close confidant to Mary Todd Lincoln. Host Michelle Martin speaks with Professor Clarence Lusane about Keckley's contributions to American history. Okay, so now we are going to start listening to this, to this interview. Switching gears now, you might have caught the new film Lincoln by acclaimed director Steven Spielberg. It's about the final months of Abraham Lincoln's life. It's a critical hit. It's filling theaters and generating talk about the Oscars. But most important, it's shedding new light on some of the key historical figures of the time. One of those figures is Elizabeth Keckley. She was born into slavery and managed to buy her own freedom and that of her son. She became the personal dressmaker and close confidant of Mary Todd Lincoln. All this before the Emancipation Proclamation. And if you've seen the movie, you know that Elizabeth Keckley made only a brief appearance. We wanted to fill in some of the blanks, so we've called upon Clarence Lusane. He is an associate professor at American University School of International Service and author of the book, The Black History of the White House. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. When it comes to Elizabeth Keckley and the portrayal of her, as we said, she doesn't she doesn't play a major role in the film. I mean, you see her, but you don't hear from her very much. How, how do you assess it? Well, in many ways, it's a powerful film. However, there are many scenes where she literally is just sitting there. And, you know, there's not a word to be said. And so it comes across as her as a passive sort of uh, waiting servant for uh, Mary when that wasn't the relationship by any stretch. We actually know quite a bit about Elizabeth Keckley's life in her own words. Why is that? We know this because she wrote a book uh, many years after she left the White House. She wrote a book called Behind the Scenes or 30 Years and Four Years in the White House in which she detailed her relationship not only with Mary Lincoln but also with uh, Abraham Lincoln. But she also talked more generally about her life. And, and talk about her early life, if you would. She had, I, I, I mean, I think it is fair to say that she endured everything that we think of as being true about slavery. Is that is that accurate to say? It is. She was born into slavery, uh, and she had worked her way out of it. But she had been raped when she was younger. She had a son, George, and she not only worked and earned enough money working even as she worked on weekends as a dressmaker, she earned enough money eventually to buy both her freedom and that of George. She was a sought-after dressmaker, um, before Mary Todd Lincoln, is that not correct? I mean, she had clients who were, you know, the creme de la creme of Washington society. That's Isn't a, that right? That's <laughs> exactly right. In fact, the most important corrective, I think, in terms of what the film portrays and what was reality is that if you look at the film, she basically is seen as a servant. But she really was an independent businesswoman, and Mary Lincoln was her client. Like Donna Karen, for example, who's known to dress the right. who's known to have been has been known to dress first ladies or Oscar de la Renta or Tracy Reese or somebody really, that's sort of. one of the best dressmakers in Washington D.C. in 1860, 1861 when now, the Lincolns first came. We're speaking with Clarence Lusane. He's written a book called The Black History of the White House. We're talking about Elizabeth Keckley, the former enslaved American who became a, a free businesswoman and a close confidant of Mary Todd Lincoln's. So she actually worked for and dressed wives of 
the people who were trying to keep people in slavery at, you know, at this point. Did she talk about that? I mean, did she talk about any ambivalence or difficulty in dressing these ladies? She talked about it very intellectually and very, in some ways, humorously in her book. Now, she, prior to working for Mary Lincoln, worked for Verena Davis, who was the wife of Jefferson Davis, who became the president of the Confederacy. So that's how she flowed. You know, she went to the top of the, you know, social establishment in Washington, D.C. of the time. When Jefferson Davis and Verena were leaving Washington, as all of the Southern Congress members were, they asked her to go with them. With the kind of future promise that once they won the war and Jefferson Davis became the president, then they would come back to Washington and she would come back with them and work in the White House. She said, well, no, I don't think so. Uh, that plan really doesn't work for me. I didn't buy my way out of slavery to go back and you know, go down to the South and be with you guys. And so she you know, basically turned her down. But it was shortly after that that she met Mary Lincoln and in a competition for who would be Mary Lincoln's dressmaker, Elizabeth Heckley uh, was selected, and uh, they became friends, in part because uh, Mary Lincoln was not socially acceptable in the Washington, D.C. Uh, community. She was seen as kind of strange, a bit kind of crazy, uh, and an outsider. And this really reflected Elizabeth as well. So Elizabeth Keckley and her became close, but they also became close because of personal tragedies. Elizabeth Keckley lost her son uh, in the first year of the Civil War in, in August 19, uh, 1861. But he had volunteered to serve. He had volunteered to serve. Uh, he, at that point, uh, African Americans were not allowed into the military. But he was very fair-skinned, and he passed for white. Mm -hmm. uh, and he joined, and he was—he was—he ended up uh, dying. And Mary Lincoln, of course, had been sympathetic to her. And then Willie Lincoln, uh, one of the Lincoln's son, died. And Elizabeth, who had become very close to Mary at that point, was there through all of that, helped to bathe him and prepare him for the funeral, and was with her through that whole period. So they became really tight. Uh, based on those experiences and based on uh, pretty much independent relationship with each other, not a servant to master relationship, but really two women who were in, you know, very, very harsh circumstances. Now, she was not just a, a, not just, not that that would not have been significant enough that she was successful enough as a businesswoman, as you pointed out, but um, she was also an activist and started a number of uh, charities and associations. Could you talk a little bit about that? Right. This is the other egregious error, I think, in the uh, Lincoln film, is that you would never get a sense that she was someone who had not only thought about issues of freedom, but was actively engaged in making that happen. When the war first started, African Americans began to leave the plantations in the thousands, ultimately in the tens of thousands, and they knew nowhere to go but to Washington, D.C. So they began to pour into the city. And they were called contrabands because they were basically still seen as property. These individuals who literally crawled into town with what they had on their back needed food, they needed clothing, they needed education. So she organized what became the Contraband Association, which was to address all of those concerns. She was also instrumental in arranging for Abraham Lincoln to meet with Sojourner Truth, right? So she really was a person who was way beyond just a dressmaker, way beyond just a friend of Mary Lincoln's, but in fact was someone who was really central and critical in, in the period. You mentioned earlier that she wrote a book about her life that has a great deal of detail in it about her experiences. Um, as I understand, there was a very negative reaction to the book. It was not well received and didn't sell many copies and ended her friendship with Mary Todd Lincoln. Why is that? The book came out many years after she had left the White House. When Lincoln was assassinated, uh, Mary Lincoln found herself on very hard times. And not only did Mary not have a clear income, she was in actually a great deal of debt. Uh, Elizabeth and Mary concocted a scheme by which they would start selling all of these dresses, particularly to New York and to New York high society. But they would do it in such a way that Mary would not be necessarily linked into this because it would be embarrassing. And so their, their relationship continued long after Mary left the White House. 
And the book published details not only about her experiences in the White House, but apparently some letters that had been exchanged uh, and things that many, uh, at least Mary felt, uh, were confident to, that had been breached. And so uh, they began, to, they had a falling out kind of over that. Did, did that affect her life, uh, the, the latter part of her life, the fallout or the, the negative reaction to her book? Elizabeth, because she uh, had spent a great deal of time helping Mary, uh, after Lincoln was assassinated, uh, began to lose her business. Uh, so she was on hard times as well. Uh, at one point, though, she was able to find an academic job uh, teaching at Wilberforce. Uh, and then after she finished teaching, she ended up basically in a senior home uh, in Washington, D.C., basically kind of being cared for uh, in her last uh, number of years. Clarence Hussein is the author of The Black History of the White House. He was kind of to join us from our studios in Washington, D.C. Professor Hussein, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.